Hi, welcome to part three in the Padook 3Cent microcontroller programming series where we build up open source hardware and software to program these 3Cent microcontrollers. Now in part two, we looked at actually assembling this PCB, but you plug it in, it doesn't do anything. It's dumb because the Atmel processor on here is completely blank. So we have to program the firmware into this thing, but without using an Atmel programmer. We're gonna use what's called DFU or device firmware upgrade via the USB. And it sounds easy, but eh, there's a few traps for young players. Let's go. Okay, we've got our board assembled. And yes, I do have a little um, SO8 um, SMD adapter for that. I actually did have one. You can see a little SO8 chip in there at the moment. Just happened to have one of those lying around. I forgot to order one, but I did actually have one. So no whackers. Um, I could have just bodged in an SMD adapter board anyway. Anyway, doesn't matter. What we want to do now is actually program the STM32 Micro on this thing, which is an STM32F072 C8T6 for those playing along at home. And if you actually plug this in, um, it's not going to do anything because it's not programmed. There's no in Windows to tell you that uh, this thing's actually plugged in because it's not. Well, it's not doing anything. So the first thing we want to do is actually measure the voltage regulator on here because we do have a 3.3 volt voltage regulator. So we just want to measure across one of these bypass caps here, uh, just you know, surrounding the micro, just to make sure we get 3.3 volts. So I can't easily put this on screen, so you have to trust me, I'm probing it. Yep, minus 3.3 volts because I have my probes backwards. But yeah, so we've got 3.3 volts. So there's 3.3 volts going to the micro. Now, we can't actually measure um, this other stuff down here, like 6.6 .6 and 13 uh, volts programming. These are the programming, uh, these are the VDD and the programming voltages down here that go off to the micro because these need to be enabled and things like that. Now, program, uh, I I don't know we could try but it doesn't matter we can do that later all we care about is getting our micro working 3.3 volts on there and that our uh, USB is connected here and we're and it's going through and then it goes through and it actually programs now we're not actually going to use this header here to program we actually could using the STM tools but the good thing about the STM 32 processors and a lot of other processors is that they have a built-in serial bootloader in them um, a, a, which means you can just connect straight up to the USB and talk to the thing and program that using programming software it's called uh, DFU and DFU mode stands for device firmware upgrade and it supports like several different processes support the same thing so the one DFU programming software can support uh, might potentially support multiple different programmers STM32 being one of them because you saw I just plugged it in and Windows didn't detect it at all because there's nothing in there. What you have to do, and on here I'll take off that SO8 adapter, there's a little button on here which you have to press down, hold down, and then when you plug it in, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get the Windows. There it is. Hopefully you heard that. If we go over to Device Manager, and there it is. Other devices, STM32 bootloader. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. That means, whoop, whoa, it's gone. Aha, and that looks like it's Windows. That's gone over to here rather than other devices. It's now, uh, Windows probably just installed the drivery thing for it. And now it's a universal serial bus controller and it's the STM device in DFU mode. So Windows automatically knows about this. I don't know about Linux and Mac or whatever. I don't know. Um, you're you're on your own, but STM device. So that means that our micro is soldered correctly. Our 3.3 volt voltage regulator here, U2 is all working, and our resistance. You know, there's no shorts on the data lines. Our USB connectors soldered correctly, and you know, because there's a lot of little, you know, tiny little joints in there. You can get a little, you know, hairline short or something like that between one of the data lines, and it just wouldn't do anything. Um, and I was hoping that it wouldn't work, so I'd have to do some troubleshooting, but. Yeah, <laughs> can't always win them. Anyway, I hope yours doesn't work if you're trying to build this up or your next project doesn't work. So you have to troubleshoot it because you learn a lot when things fail and you have to troubleshoot them. If these work first go, okay, you've learned how to solder, but you know, you haven't learned how to troubleshoot. Anyway, so this micro is now talking. So now we can download the uh, DFU programmer software so now if we go to the githubs uh software sources can be found easy pdk programmer software and if we go into firmware here install dfu util 
um, on your computer. There's Linux, there's, uh, is there Mac? Yeah, Mac OS and Windows. Unplug USB, it tells you uh, to keep holding the button. And then you execute this DFU utility, this very complicated thing. Anyway, that's, that's the binary file, which we can download from up here. Easy PDK programmer. That's our, you know, they've already compiled that. Uh, with the STM32 uh, compiler, and then you put it into a certain uh, memory address and things like that. So, you know, it goes into flash, internal flash memory, and that's the address it's going to, and all that sort of jazz. Anyway, um, they've already figured that out for us. That's all the complicated stuff. Somebody's already done that, so we don't need to know. Um, and we should get um, this, this output in a command box for this DFU utility. So I'll go and install that. So here's the DFU utility, uh, supported devices, open MoCo. Ah, yeah, there you go, STM32 uh, built-in bootloader. So there you go, it supports some uh, DSO Nano. <laughs> um, it supports some other uh, devices. Anyway, let's install that. So thank you, Stefan Schmidt and Tormod Volden. I don't want to build it. Uh, browse it via the web interface or clone it. I don't want to clone the Git. Releases folder. Ta-da! Win64, yeah, we want version, I guess, the latest version, 0.9. It'd be nice if they just put the older ones in, like, old subdirectory or something, but it's pretty obvious. There you go, Win64 zip. I guess that's it. There we go, these are the files we've got in here. So we'll have to, uh, you know, a DOS command line over to DFU util. So there you go, for those playing log at home. Yeah, there's all the instructions, looks very comprehensive. Excellent. You, Herman, wrote the manual, good on you. Okay, so we want to copy that, and I've downloaded uh, Easy PDK Prog, and I've put it in my C drive here. We go over to our command, CD DFU. We're in like Flynn. There we go. So we should be able to run that now. Here we go. Well, it, I don't know, it might flishy flash its leads afterwards, but let's run it. Hopefully, that's all we need. Let's go. Ah, cannot open DFU dev Did I not know DFU capable USB, de USB device available? Ah, what? Right, is there something wrong with this address? Maybe this address isn't correct. I don't know. I haven't used this before. Yeah, it just it cannot find the device. So do this again. When in doubt, turn it off and on again. Aha, uh -huh. is it something to do with this? Like port 9 hub 01? Do I have to change that? Maybe? I don't know. So yeah, there it is. There's the 0483 and PID DF11. You know, it's got the other stuff in front of it, vid underscore. And it's got the and PID, but I assume that that's what you do. Anyway, um, that seems right. Let's try it one more time. No. Oh, everyone's probably screaming at me, but you know, sorry, this is like the first time I've used this. So uh, yeah, I don't know how this addressing actually works, but the device is there. It's in Windows. You saw it. It had the same numbers at least. So I assume the errors in here. It says the device, so the, the, even though the address is correct, it was not migrated due to partial or ambiguous match. Uh. So on Windows, you have to register the device with the Win USB driver. I'll lib USB K, please let's see a wiki for more details. Okay. If your target device is not HRD, you must install a driver before you can communicate with it using lib USB. Currently, this means installing one of Microsoft's Win USB lib uh, drivers. Okay. No worries. The most common version of Zadig. I think I've done this. I think I've done this for something before. Yeah, I've certainly done this before for uh, a couple of things. I think it was for one of those USB RF dongle things. They're not going to make this easy for you, are they? Maybe it would have been easier to actually go in and program it via the header, perhaps. Um, use it, but then you've got to have a programmer. Whereas this, you don't actually need an STM uh, programmer. They're very cheap. You can buy them for like five or ten bucks on eBay. It's just an extra thing you've got to have. This is how you do it without any programming hardware at all, which is cool. All right, so I've downloaded Zadig. It's been updated very recently, um, which is great. Uh, driver, I don't know if I need that, do I? There's nothing there. Install Win C. 
Okay, I guess in Win USB, the latest version, I guess. No, it's not going to let me. No, no, there it goes. <laughs> Gotta wait. Impatient Dave. See, you know, it's these things that make it like really tricky to do that. Like, if you do this all the time, you probably already have this installed and it would have just worked. And I, you know, you're like, yeah, do that all the time. No worries. You know, two second job. Um, in fact, like, I thought that it would be a very quick job to do this, but, um, you know, the drive was successfully installed. Thank you. Do I have to reboot? Actually, go over to our device manager. Let's have a look at the properties. Device is working properly. Events was not migrated due to partial or ambiguous match. Same thing. But I'll give her a burl anyway. Nah, still can't find it. So, okay, going back to here, it's going currently supports WinUSB and HID drivers for generic USD devices as well as the Lib USB Win32 and Lib USB K drivers. So, We've installed WinUSB, and it doesn't work. So maybe one of these other ones might work. You know, I, <laughs> my eyes are starting to roll in my head, uh, which provides new set API for Windows. God, you know, like, makes sense to people who know, right? But uh, if you just want to program your little widgety thing, woof. So I reached out to the Twitterverse with this uh, error message, like, is... This might not migrated due to partial or ambiguous match. Does that have something to do with it? Or is it something else? And you know you're deep in the Windows shit where not even barnacles can help you out. That's a new one for me, Davey, and I worked at Microsoft for 15 years as a developer on Windows. Murphy gets me every time, so yep, this could take a while. So let's go back to Zadig here and... Although there's no devices showing up here, if you go up here and you go list all devices, ta-da, it pops up. Why it doesn't, like, just, why would you not do that? I don't know. Anyway, um, so let's try reinstalling the driver STM32 bootloader. There it is. So let's change that driver, the ST tub, and that is actually a thing, because if you go over to here like this, and you go back into here, you'll go into here, ST tub 30, there it is, device started. So this device not migrated, that was a red herring because that was like the first thing and looks like it went through a sequence and it's installed this ST tub 30, whatever that is, I got no idea. So it's, the service is ST tub 30. So we want to replace that service with Win 30, with the Win USB driver. And there it is, 0483DF11, bingo. Replace driver. Here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes. Ta-da! And oh, okay. You know, ah, devices. There you go. It went from a controller to a device. Aha! That's looking promising. Installation can take some time. Okay. I think we might have a winner, winner, chicken dinner here. Done. If we actually go back over to here, if we actually list devices. Ta-da! Found DFU! We got it! We're gonna do it. It's gonna work now, because we've listed it. It's a found device. Go! Yes! We did it! We did it! File downloaded successfully! Ha <laughs> ha! Fantastic! So, we now, let's um, disconnect it. Okay, so, yeah, it's all good. It's programmed. Let's see if it does the when we um, just plug it in. It does. Don't have to hold down the button. So it's programmed now. Everything's working. Sweet. Fantastic. Well, that was a bit of a learning experience, was it? And yeah, I've actually done this before. I, I, I should have remembered this. I should have remembered that I've overwritten drivers exactly like this with Win USB, And it's a little bit complicated. It's easy once you know. See, that would have been, if these instructions were on that page, you would have just done it and it would have just worked, you know. So... Yeah, eh, there you go. But now the instructions are in this video. For some reason, my video capture software is Kamigatsa and um, it's giving this weird um, black and white effect with a stripy color bar. I, I don't know. I kind of like it. <laughs> so I'll stick with it. Anyway, we've plugged it in now and as you can see, it now works without 
having to press the button and go into, into the bootloader mode. And bingo, now we get ST Microelectronics Virtual COM port. So we've just got a regular serial COM port 7, and that's what the software is going to use to communicate with this and then program the chip. Thank <laughs> you.